Hello, welcome to another episode of Dirt Nap City Dead Ends. Kelly, I've been having fun with these dead ends where we don't talk about people, but we talk about other types of uh, dead things, right? Dead, how do we? Yeah. Just dead concept, dead, uh, dead ends, right? Yeah, yeah. I think originally we had talked about calling this whatever happened to, but I kind of like dead ends better. Um, it just it just seems a little more descriptive and seems to fit the brand a little better for us. But but yeah, these are concepts, uh, phrases, companies, technologies that that existed maybe when we were younger or maybe way back. We haven't tried any really old ones yet. But um, so far we have two episodes. This is our third. This will be our third. I have no idea what Alex is about to talk about. Um, so I'm excited to see if this was something I had in my life when I was younger or not. But um, I hope you didn't, but I bet you did. I bet you did. What is it? Is it hey. like polio? <laughs> <laughs> the um, the last time you talked about CDs, and it got me thinking: if if any, if there's demand out there, uh, should we do a uh, 27 set season one, season two uh, CDs of Dirt Nap City? <laughs> right, right. You you can order it from Time Life Books, Time Life Archives, and uh, you'll get a gold coin as well. We'll send you one a month. Oh, yeah. I think for $200 a year, recurring, of course, recurring subscription. You got to love those recurring subscriptions. Yeah, yeah. $200 a month, you will get all of our episodes on CD. As a matter of fact, for $200 a month, we'll put all our episodes on whatever format you want. I don't know how much you think $200 is, but I'm not going to <laughs> transcribe that. No. Dude, you're a professor. That's that's right. Writing <laughs> that's sentences true. is it's part of your It's a DNA. month's worth of work for me. Uh, today I want to talk about something that more of a behavior, you know, we've been talking about, we talked about a building, we talked about old tech, but I want to talk about a behavior that, oh, oh, I I know what it is. Spitting into spittoons. Close. Close. (laughs) Is it? It is close. This is a behavior that when we were in our, say, younger than 10 years old used to be pretty common now maybe not as much in 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 well i bet you yeah i bet you saw as much as i did and then all of a sudden when we were teenagers just kind of stopped and today you don't see it a lot and that behavior is littering oh yeah that's kind of like spitting in a spittoon or or not into a spittoon just spitting on the ground I remember car trips where you would go, you would drive along the road and the road was absolutely filthy with garbage. And this is when, this is probably in the 1970s, mid to late seventies. And I, I've been to other countries and some of that is still there today, but just, just garbage. I think if you were a time traveler and you went back 50 years, I think you would be appalled at just the amount of garbage that just laid around on the road, on the sidewalk, everywhere you looked, I think you would be amazed on how much garbage there was. And changing people's behaviors is very difficult, as the as the environmental um, people know. You know, trying to change people's behavior now um, with uh, with climate change, but they, they were able to successfully reduce littering. Because they turned littering into a taboo. Who is they? These different organizations. One of them was called Keep America Beautiful. And that started in 1953. And one of the things that they did was start this idea of of litter bugs. Do you remember when oh. you were a kid? The worst thing you could be called is a litter bug, man. Don't be a litter bug. Yeah. So yeah, that used to be jitter, on, jitterbug, and then it changed into litterbug. And they started on us when we were in elementary school by by threatening that we would be litterbugs if we threw away something that wasn't in the garbage can. I think that was really important to get the elementary kids to not want to be this despicable bug, insect, something, right? Yeah. Also, they had that uh, that Native American guy that would cry. That's what I was going to get to. So in 1971, they call it the Crying Indian PSA. Yeah. So the guy was actually not Native American. He was this strange Italian-American actor who only played Native Americans in the movies. His name was Iron Eyes Cody. 
but he was really like the Sicilian. They even did DNA testing after he died and found that he was like 100% Sicilian and he had no Native American blood. But I don't think he was trying to like goof on Native Americans. He just, but everywhere he went, he wore the the headdress and he was really into it. But he, uh, his name was Iron Eyes Cody. That was the name he had, he had chosen for him for himself. But uh, that was a very influential marketing campaign. So for the people who haven't seen it, it was this Native American-ish uh, person who would, uh, he'd be looking out over the land and he would see just garbage and maybe, yeah, I don't know if it was a landfill, but it was just garbage everywhere. And they'd zoom in on his face and you'd see the single tear coming from his eye, right? Like yeah, you yeah. took our land and you, that, commercial had a huge impact because again trying to change people's behavior you're turning it into a taboo you're trying to change the social norm here right in texas where you and i live in 1985 they came up with an ingenious slogan yeah i know who i actually know who came up with that slogan and i've met this guy before tim mcclure from gsdnm so gsdnm Ad agency, uh, McClure was the M, and he came up with that slogan in 1985 and is still probably profiting from it today. You're exactly right. In fact, uh, I read a story here about Tim McClure pitching that to do the Keep American, Keep America Beautiful people and their audience. The people they were trying to change, the behaviors that they were trying to change was of 18 to to 35 year old or 18 to 24 year old males and they Truck said drivers these would be the kind of people they called them uh bubba's who drove pickup trucks that thought it was spittoon, their spittoon spittoon spitters they thought it was their god-given right to litter right so yeah. it was going to be a tough a tough sell and they were pitching it he said the the people in the board of keep america beautiful their average age was 107 <laughs> and these people didn't didn't have any connection to the people they were trying to talk to, and he and he came up. They, they showed the first uh, board that said, uh, "Do you remember what the slogan was?" Yeah, uh, uh, don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with Texas. And they put that up there, and uh, the little old lady she said, "Can we at least say please?" <laughs> <laughs> and and McClure said, "No, ma'am." You cannot use the line if you put please in front of it. And they they went without the support of the of TxDOT, the Department of Transportation, because they wanted to put please in front of it. And the very first ad was premiered on at the Cotton Bowl or during the Cotton Bowl telecast, January 1st, 1986, with Stevie Ray Vaughan singing The Eyes of Texas. And at the very end, he would say, don't mess with Texas. Yes. They made 26 of those commercials uh, in a 12-year spot. Uh, GSDNM did. Like you say, that was one of the great marketing um, triumphs that they ever had. And and they found that six, 96% of Texans have heard the phrase, don't mess with Texas. Yeah. Yeah. And it's still, it's, it's still used in, I mean, there's so many, there's so many other means to that, right? It doesn't just have to be about litter. Now, you know, it can be about football. It can be about, well, that um, was the problem you know, is that only 60% of Texans knew that it was associated with litter. So then they had to reboot this in 2009 with George Strait. And the new version said, don't mess with Texas means don't litter. <laughs> Not as catchy. It means please, please don't litter. <laughs> right. they, exactly. they, put that, they put the phrase pre, please in there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really funny because um, my wife's sister worked for Tim McClure at GSDNM. And, and uh, that was how I, I've heard, I've heard this story before, but it's a great story. And it is just such a direct um it is such a direct and powerful statement. It's short. It's simple. It's not rude. It's just, it's kind of a warning. Oh, and it taps into Texan sense of pride in Texas, and but also their sense of like us against the world. So it, it's perfect. It's just absolutely perfect. And it's, 
it's just amazing that it's only four words and it reduced litter on Texas highways 72% from 1987 to 1990. And somehow like don't mess with Vermont just doesn't doesn't really Well, it's funny because other other states like New York is let's pick it up. Let's pick it up. <laughs> like, <let's> hey, pick <laughs> you goomba. Let's pick it up. Like that has a double meaning, right? Let's pick up yeah, the trash, yeah. but let's pick up the pace too. Like let's get yeah. rid of this. And in California, it's uh, don't trash, don't trash California, dude. It also, kind of goes with their you know, don't trash it, man. And then in uh, in this is an international endeavor too. And in in the UK, it's keep Britain tidy. <laughs> Wow. You know, uh, I, I, I gotta say, you know, don't mess with Texas. Brilliant, brilliant campaign. Um, and we'd like to think that, uh, you know, our big, beautiful state that we live in here, Alex and I are both in Texas is partially cleaner because of that. But I do think that it just also, because so many children grew up with, um, like you said, the litter bug concept, and it was something that as, we got more disposable waste. And by that, I mean packaging. I think in the earlier 20th 20th century, things didn't all come in plastic blister packs, right? That you could just throw and that would not deteriorate. Things came in paper or things came in cardboard. And, and, you know, today part of the problem is that stuff just doesn't break down. Do you know what the most common piece of litter is? I'm going to say a packing peanut. It's actually a cigarette butt. Really? Yeah. So my dad was, uh, he worked for an oil company, so not not really great for uh, not polluting the planet, but he went offshore on oil rigs and on seismic boats to search for oil in the ocean, like North Sea, whatever. And he told me there were some times they would see, I mean, you've heard about this big, uh, I don't even know where it is, but this big sea of litter mm-hmm. in, the, um, in the ocean. Right. But he has seen seen smaller versions of that and he said there were so many styrofoam things including packing peanuts in it that that styrofoam is probably one of the worst worst possible things because it floats and it doesn't deteriorate it's got a half-life of a billion years or whatever kills fish we'll probably get dinged on our uh on our podcast review because it doesn't really have a half-life of a billion years but yeah Accuracy is not something we're super. Str- I mean, we want to get the the spirit of this stuff right, but you yeah, know, approximation yeah. is uh, is more of our lane. Yeah, it, I think the important thing, like you were saying, is that they they got us young with littering, and they did they changed the norm, they they turned it into a taboo, and it come to find out. I mean, littering still exists. Obviously, people do still throw out trash onto the the street sometime but it's not because they don't care i think what we've learned is it has still has to be convenient for people the biggest yeah predictor of littering is the distance to a trash can that if somebody's far Mm. away from so if you put more trash cans out in public littering will cut down one of the other big predictors of whether or not someone's going to litter is if there's already trash on the street if somebody's already seen somebody do it then they're going to do it as well you're you're more likely to litter if there's litter there. They're more I don't want to say lazy, but we're more about convenience than we are. I don't think there's people that are against litter that are that are pro littering. I think everyone wants things to, to everyone agrees that things look nicer when it's not littered. But I think in terms of changing people's behavior, we know a lot more about how to do that now than we used to. And I just love the idea when you know, appreciate it sometime when you're driving on the interstate and you're looking around, there's virtually no garbage on the side of the road because that's not the way it was 50, 40 years ago. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's mostly now you just see uh, bits of tires that have fallen off. Right. Off trucks, right. Right. You know, re- retread. Well, yeah. well uh, there's one other thing that I was hoping you would bring up. Um, and this was something it's, it's a little, little more broad than just littering, but do you remember this phrase, give a hoot, don't pollute? Oh, man, that was Woodsy Owl. Woodsy Owl, yeah. Woodsy Owl was a program for the Forest Service, I think, and he basically taught kids not to not to pollute. Yeah, 
Well, shout out. Here's let's pour one out for Woodsy. <laughs> yeah, good old Woodsy. Woodsy and Tim McClure and uh, that lady who said please. Yeah. All of them deserve deserve a deserve a toast. All right, that was another episode of Dead Ends. Bye.